some of those people, other than the tamariki, the children from Tawiti School, that have helped you through the past 18 months? Well, Ma Michelle McDonald, she worked as a council then, but she doesn't anymore. Yeah, she was um, a big powerhouse behind getting me sorted out in there. Paul Schrader, I was having, sitting up top, at the top gate having my lunch one day, and he, sh he shot past and pulled over and wanted to come and help, so he came in and helped quite a bit, actually, last uh, last summer. Who else we got? We got the Prestiges, the Brethren. They were ex-students of mine once upon a time, and that's from the higher centre. They, they, oh, they, they're in there nearly every day, mainly the Pākehā community, really. One day, maybe our own will come along, yeah. And I suppose this is a good time to uh, get that out there to our people that uh, you need help. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you've also been working with with Aroha Houston, yeah. who is from Ngāti Tupaya. She's on the trust as well. So she's been doing a lot of work for you as well in terms of written. Yes. Okay. Yes, definitely. Wonderful. And, of course, she's, your, um, she's the one that looks after you. Yeah. <laughs> So what's been yeah, her job? Role. Yeah, what's been her role in terms of you um, getting Turuturu Mōkai up and running again? Okay, so she acts as a, a liaison between myself and the trustees and carries my messages backwards and forwards to, to their meetings and she'll pop down with some lunch and that on, on the odd day as well. Get me to call in for tea. Wonderful. <laughs> All those supportive roles. Oh, yeah. beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, uh, Milton. Yeah. Again, you're still looking for help. But in the meantime, now, of course, um, on Monday, we saw the article in the paper about dumping ground exposed. I first discovered it, oh, it was early last year. And if, if you go in the, the bottom gate there, the main entrance, there's the first pass site, and it's right along the side of those trenches there. It's, it's about the size of a rugby field, approximately. Wow. Um, that's the, con you know, the contaminated area. There was only parts of it exposed, but by March there was a fair bit of it uncovered, just with us working around there anyway. Yeah. It was very much on the surface, but sort of hidden by the, the growth of the grass and just a thin layer of dirt. In November I showed it to the mayor, but didn't really get much of a reaction from him. And um, two weeks ago I showed it to him again. Still no positive reaction. That was that. That part of it done. Um, it's got, you know, it's got glass, asbestos, um, electrical parts, you know, batteries and things like that, bones, teeth, hospital equipment, all that kind of stuff in it. Um, Were you shocked? Yeah, but I, you know, I had sort of gotten over it a wee bit when um, when we got the digger in. You know, I sort of got used to, you know, walking around it, working around it for the most of last year. Well. I wasn't as shocked as some of the public were that turned up on the day when we really exposed it with the digger. Milton, we'll take a break, come back and talk more on the reactions you've had from the various community groups. Stay tuned, Juano, for more Court Edel. Again, a dumping ground exposed at Turu Turu Mōkai. I'm Lorena Milton, Tinafu. And like you said, you had no response from uh, Mia Ross Dunlop um, from no. South Taranaki District Council. No, got it. I mean, well, I mean, Ross was just, ah, oh, you know, the whole expense process. Yes. They would have to go through if to action anything there. Yeah. So I think it's kind of still pending with Ross. Well, it seems to be because um, now that it's hit the papers, and I suppose, you know, to get it out there, you had to go to the Daily News. Yeah, unfortunately, um, some of our, our media um, in far places weren't, weren't very interested, so it came back to our, our local rag to um, yeah, put it out there. What are the processes that, have, that you've been through since you've uncovered it? Fonterra have been in because they draw water from the same stream. They came in, checked it, they're okay with it. The council themselves sent a representative in to check and he was okay with it. Taranaki Regional Council, he came in, he done a quick look over, he's okay with the asbestos as long as it remains in the state it, it is. They're going to sending their scientific officer next week to actually do some soil samples and um, water samples. Is it because it's exposed that it could run down the streams? Um, in my opinion, it could. I mean, um, a lot of rain yesterday and last night. It could have washed into the stream. 
but whether it was enough to wa actually wash it in the stream, don't know. It's uh, four metres away yes. from the waterway. There we're about, yeah, half a more metre, mm -hmm. and we'd hit the water table. Yes. So it sits on an underground stream anyway. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we've got the regional council in there. Of course, everybody would have rushed in, Fonterra as well, and Silver Fern Farms. Yeah. So obviously that's going to affect the water usage that they use on the Tahuti stream. Well, they, they claim that uh, they're too far down for it to have any effect at this point of time. I think more will be revealed yes. when we get the digger, in, digger back in and really open it up. Because it actually, talking to the neighbours and that, it actually does extend beyond the present boundary line of the reserve. The dump does trickle into the neighbouring properties, which actually is a spring right next to our fence line end. But suspicious that the dump actually goes right around the spring. So you could be uncovering more than uh, what the council realise, eh? Definitely uncovering a can of worms here. Well, opening up a can of worms. Yeah, it does go right up against the parside trenches. It hasn't been all favourable for you. You've had a bit of a rough spot in terms of cleaning up to the Turu Mokai. <laughs> yeah, we, we had our moments uh, in the earlier days. I actually um, had problems with the public in general as well as our own people. Bully tactics, things like that. And I was spat in the face twice by a couple of ladies, members of the public. Yeah. You know, um, called a cannibal. and Sad. Oh. Um, had a shotgun incident, and I also had one of my volunteers. She she was also approached by a, a member of the public who, who claimed to be part of the place. But um, anyway, he he was going to attack her, and oh, the police came and got him, took him away. Um, but yeah, there's uh, been a lot of incidents like that. And is it still happening now? I think yeah, it, it's okay. It, there's a lot of time between. Our last incident and, and now, I think our last incident would have been October, September, October last year. All right. I hear that um, we're the poas at Tiruchiru Mokai up on the hill. Now they've painted that and tried to make it a look, well, make it look a bit better than what it was. Yeah, to Tony Nehru, he, um, he's the man there. He's done a great job. Wonderful. He's the vice chairman of the hapu and... Um, Hey, that's his little pet project up there. Hey, it, it's, it's looking a bit brighter now, the fencing around the pole, and um, he's done a great job, tidied it all up, painted it up, Wonderful. weeded the area. Wonderful. Yeah. And, of course, uh, that was part of the Tango Moi Trust as well, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. You're researching at the moment now with uh, Aroha, with Tata. Of course, there's more to come with the story as well, isn't it? We're researching how it came to be there in the first place. There, there are a few uh, little branches on the story to, to come. One is the bones that have been discovered. Another branch is the what they call the Larkin bequest that the council have hold of, the $80,000 that belongs to the reserve. Um, yeah, and, and of course, who put it there? Where did it come from in the first place? And uh, we've got really strong leads but it's about those people willing to come forward and, and make their statement publicly. But they're a bit shy and, um, you know, don't want to become targets, I suppose. Yeah, well, somebody's going to become a target if they don't stand up and do anything. I suppose yeah. the question for you at the moment right now is um, the clean-up and who's going to pay for it? Yeah, I mean, a simple solution would be for the, the council and... Uh,
Kia ora mai na, na Motera, um, Milton, because you're exactly right. It wouldn't have even turned into that state. But however, it was left in the state that it was. And of course, there's a plea there for help from our own people, from the surrounding districts around Turuturu Mokai. And we've got many whānau that live within that area, not just our Pākehā community. Uh, what would you say to them? Yep, yeah, just come on down. Not hard. Now, if you want to help down at Turu Turu Mōkai, of course, you can get a hold of Milton Whareaitu at the Tapiti School in Hawara. Also, go down there, check it out. And if you're going to go down there, take a lunch for the volunteers that are down there at the same time. Or even lend a helping hand. Nō reira Milton, nei rā te mea te kia koe. Thank you for your time. I just want to say one thing to you. Please be safe. And for those of your volunteers who are helping also, I heard you when you see that uh, a mask, gum boots, gloves, very important, especially when you've exposed what you've exposed. Noreira, Milton, tēnā koe. And we'll keep in touch with Milton with regards to this tuki. At the moment, they're researching, so uh, watch this space. Koia tērā, Noreira, you're here on Te Wāpāre, ka I was talking to Milton Whareaitu. Uh, he uri nō Ngāti Tupaia, uh, nō te iwi o Ngāti Ruanui. Roma, no te